Good day students, I'm Laurie Lee Coons and today we're going to do the analysis of vitamin C tablets. We're going to start this by determining the concentration of a sodium hydroxide solution. We're going to achieve this by doing a titration reaction using hydrochloric acid with a known concentration and then using bromothymol blue to tell us when we've reached the neutralization point for the sodium hydroxide. Once we've calculated the concentration of sodium hydroxide, we can start with part two of the experiment in which we determine the amount of acid in a vitamin C tablet. We're going to start this experiment by preparing two burettes. Our first one is going to be our hydrochloric acid and our second one is going to be our sodium hydroxide. Now we need to make sure that the bubble at the bottom doesn't form. So how we do this is we make sure we empty some of our liquid into a waste beaker and then we hope all the bubbles fall out and there are minimal bubbles so we can continue. This is sodium hydroxide because um, we're going to standardize the sodium hydroxide with our known solution of hydrochloric acid. Always make sure that the tap at the bottom is closed. Then all of this that we've used to clean goes into our waste beaker. And we can do it like this to make sure that no bubbles form and then we just need to make sure we stop before everything runs out. So remember to always be eye level, so some sure people need to stand on chairs like I'm doing, um, but always make sure that you're eye level with the solution to be able to read the meniscus. So now we are going to add 20 milliliters of sodium hydroxide into each of our beakers. So to save time, we are going to use our final value of the previous one to start our initial value of our second reading. So now if we need to add another 20 milliliters, we're now at 40.4. So now if we need add, to add another 20, we're going to need to go to 60. But our burette is limited only to 50 milliliters. So we need to refill it so that we have a space where we can do another 20 milliliters. Before we start with our titration, we need to make color standards. We're going to do this by adding a small bit of our acid into a vial and add a drop of indicator into it. This is going to tell us what color our indicator is in an acid and a base. The combination of the two colors are going to be the color that we're looking for at our end point. So we can see we've got a yellow and a blue color. So if we know from the color wheel, if we mix the two together, we get green. So green is going to be our endpoint color. Always remember to add indicator into your Erlenmeyer flask.
Now we are going to start with our rough titration. This we can do by adding one milliliter of solution at a time and just swirling the flask in between. It does not need to be accurate. This is over titrated because it's yellow now and we are looking for a green color, but that's all right. We can still use this rough titration value to calculate how far we need to go for our accurate titrations. Now that we've done the rough titration, we can use that titration value to determine how much we need to add for our accurate titrations. So what we're going to do is you take the rough titration value minus three milliliters and you add that in one shot. Then we only have three millimeters that we need to go drop by drop. Once again, you can see this one is over titrated as it's yellow. Hopefully we'll get one that's perfectly to neutral. As you see in this video, one drop made all the difference. So you can see the left hand side, number three, is a greener color than our first titration and it had reached the end point perfectly. So now that we've calculated the concentration of sodium hydroxide, we can move over to part two in which we calculate the amount of acid in a vitamin C tablet. So to start with experiment two, we are going to wear out our Calci Vita into our Olimea flasks. To do this quantitatively, we are going to weigh it straight into the Olimea flask. We just need to repeat the process for flask two and three. Now that we've weighed out our solids, we can add 50 milliliters of distilled water into each of our Erlenmeyer flasks. Okay, this one doesn't need to be accurate as we're more interested in how much acid is in a Calci Vita our water is not going to react as an acid, so it doesn't matter. Before we start with our titration of the Calci Vita tablets, we first need to do a color study of our indicator. So once again, we need to have our acid in face and add one drop of indicator to see what the color difference is. Okay, so here you can very clearly see that in our acid, the color is transparent, and in our base, we have this extremely bright pink. From the color test with the indicators, we noticed that the end point is going to be a light pink. However, with our Calci Vita solution, we already have a peachy color, so it's going to be very difficult to identify the color. Let's see together what color it's going to be. Remember to always do a rough titration before you start with your accurate titration.
So as I said previously, the color is very difficult to distinguish, but they're slightly different than the peachy color they were before. And that shows us that the pink from the base did change color. Uh, we're going to start weighing our Vita file now, and we're going to follow the exact same process as we did for Kelsey Vita. We're now going to do the titration of the Vitathion tablets. Now that we've done the titration with vitamin C tablets and using phenolphthalein as our indicator, you can now calculate the amount of acid in a vitamin C tablet. You'll see that in the report sheet you have to determine which tablet is more effective, the Calci Vita or the Vita Fion tablet, and with this you can finish your report sheet. I hope you learned something today. Enjoy the rest of your day.